Okay, so we work grip, we work managing the trigger, we work the draw process, we work the reload, and then one more thing we got to fine tune, and that's that strong hand only stage. Now, in the 5x5, five five, you do have one strong hand. I do recommend you practice the same mechanics in this drill that I'm going to give you with your support hand as well, because we want to be able to shoot with either hand. You never know what's going to happen to one of the other hands. Now, why shoot strong hand only? Once again, you got a flashlight in. I'm carrying my seven year old daughter to safety. I'm cut, injured, occupied. You know, maybe I just decided that this guy wasn't challenging enough for me. I decided to shoot at him with one hand only. No, just kidding. The point is, you don't have the other hand, so you're going to learn how to shoot with one hand. Now, let me show you an unloaded gun. Okay, unloaded gun. When we're talking about recoil control with one hand only, I'm talking about finding a way to mimic my two handed position, okay? with one hand only. So if I shot normally, you know, with two hands, this triangular support structure controls the recoil. If I simply take one hand off the gun and leave everything else exactly the same, the gun will recoil and return to the left, upward to left. Why? Because now there's no pressure on the left hand side of the gun. So I've got to figure out how to get the, literally my arm behind the gun and pressure on that side of the gun, which is almost impossible because I, I can't put my hand up there, okay? So your options are, number one, to take that handgun and rotate it over and cant it just slightly. Now what I'm seeing here is, when I rotate the gun over just slightly, is the gun is canted and now my arm is truly lined up on the gun. Canting is an okay technique, I'm okay with it, I used to use it a lot, but what I found though is the canted technique, um, does the, the recoil doesn't recover as quickly as the next one I'm going to show you. Okay, so position, here, cant the gun slightly, arm is lined up with the handgun. Your second option is instead of canting the handgun, I'm going to take this elbow and I'm literally going to pull that arm straight down. So now what I'm doing is basically rotating my arm down where my, my shoulder, my arm kind of locks up in my shoulder zone. There's a spot where my arm will stop and you'll feel that. And what I want to do is pay attention to now the fact that my arm is truly right behind the gun and the gun is not canted, which is a good thing for recoil recovery. And number two, I want to take all of my body weight and I want to aggressively get my body weight on the foot on the side that I'm shooting. So if I'm shooting with my right hand, I want to get all of my body weight on my right foot. If I were shooting with my left hand, I would get all my body weight on my left foot. Now my non-shooting hand, you could practice if you want that you've got your flashlight. If you ever do the, you know, the one-handed eye index technique that I teach, uh, you can wrap your arm up like you're carrying someone. But no matter what you do, consider gripping your other hand. And what we have is kind of a, I'm not sure if it's the right word or not, but symbiotic response on both sides of the body where I'm gripping with my left hand that automatically increases the grip pressure with my right hand. When I shoot competitions, for example, when I shoot a strong hand only stage, I'll start by gripping hard with my left hand, which increases the pressure that I shoot with my right hand. Now, with my Wilson Combat um, 1911, my, my thumb is automatically going to ride the safety, the thumb safety. If you don't have a 1911 and you're shooting a Glock or an MP or XDM or whatever it is, you still want to maintain that thumb position. It wants to be flagged or up in the air. And the reason for that is, if I put the thumb down, that creates a gap between the tang of the gun itself and my thumb. So if that gun recoils, now it's going to recoil that direction toward that gap. That's where the, the lack of pressure is. So no matter what I'm shooting, whether it's a 1911 with the thumb safety or a Glock or whatever, I want to tell you to flag your thumb so you have pressure between that knuckle and the tang of the gun as, as well as the, the other side of your hand. Okay? So full shooting position that I'm talking about. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go live fire and I'm going to show you a couple things about this particular position, how the gun recovers when I'm doing it right and wrong, and then I'm going to show you the full drill we're going to use to work the skill, okay? In just a second. Okay, so I've got my eyes, got my earmuffs on. I'm going to show you the, the actual demonstration portion of the shooting technique, and then I'm going to show you the drill that we're going to utilize to develop that one hand only shooting position, okay? So, without further ado, let me go ahead and load and make ready, okay? What I want you to do is, I want you just to kind of watch how the recoil and recovery is of the handgun with two hands initially. So it recoils and recovers like that. Now if I simply take it one hand off the gun and leave everything else exactly the same. Watch what the gun recovers to now. It recoils up and to the right in kind of an arc. 
Now I'm going to leave everything exactly the same, and I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to can it just slightly. So now the arm is truly behind the gun. So now the arm is actually lined up and fire a shot. Notice that time how the gun recovered quite a bit faster. So just by canting and putting my arm behind the gun, it recovers faster. So I'm going to go back to this position. Now the second technique, this is the one I prefer and I think you'll like best, is I'm going to rotate that arm straight down. So I've kind of locked it up in my shoulder joint. You can take a step forward if you want, but the point is you want to put all of your body weight on your right foot and really literally get your body behind the gun. Okay, so make sure you can see the gun there. So what I've got is arm behind the gun and my body weight behind the arm. I fire a shot. And notice on this one how fast the gun recovers. It literally doesn't move outside that target zone. As soon as I fire the shot, it snaps right back there. And if, if it's snapping right back into the center of the target, of course, then I can shoot just like that. So that's what I want is I want to not just to minimize the amount the gun recoils, but I want to maximize the speed with which it recovers. That's the key to shooting with one hand, okay? Now, to work this drill, pick whichever technique you want. Like I said, I'll tell you which one I like, the second one, much better. And I'm going to simply start from the position where I'm using either my flashlight or, you know, the, the hand position up against my body. Back to the compressed position, much like we did with the two-handed technique. And I'm going to practice extending the gun, building the grip, and testing it. First magazine, you guessed it, one round at a time. Extend the gun, build the grip, test it. I need to draw my elbow down a little bit more behind the gun this time. Extend the gun, build the grip, test it. Of course, after you run out of ammo, go ahead and do your proper reload, which you should know how to do because we worked on the reloads. Second magazine, we're going to do the same drill two rounds at a time. Here we go, just like this. Extend the gun, build the grip, test it, okay? And make sure you're getting your hits. You probably can't fire these shots as quickly with one hand and get hits as you can with two hands. Accept that and learn to shoot at the pace with which you can get hits, okay? Now, third magazine, what am I doing? Yes, again, you guessed it. Third magazine, extend the gun, build the grip, test it three rounds at a time and my challenge to you if you want a bonus drill is work three or four magazines with your strong hand load the gun back up again get new magazines and start working on your support hand same thing build the grip test it one round at a time build the grip test it one round at a time two rounds at a time build the grip, test it two rounds at a time and that way you know that no matter what happens to you if you're forced to fight with one hand or your support hand, you can do it. You have that confidence in the middle of Walmart parking lot, and you're probably not gonna wanna go to Walmart after this, you're gonna be able to get out there and win the fight no matter what happens. Of course, there's a progression of skill though, eventually where we're not just gonna learn how to shoot with one hand, but I'm gonna teach you how to manipulate the handgun with one hand, and that's gonna give you that much more confidence in your ability. So, that's your last drill. Now you know how to work each and every one of these drills to increase your chances of success and score in that five by five test. So once you've trained them for a several weeks or several months, now it's your goal to go back and check those uh, scores and see how you're doing. Follow me real quick though, before we end this drill, and I give you some links and some sources of information. This entire filming and training session, if you were wondering what I was doing in terms of hits, there they are. No faking it, no bullshit. I called the high right shot that I told you about. That's where they are, and this includes the five by five test. There were my headshots, okay? When you're training, be honest with yourself, find out what your weak areas are, make sure you're training them so you can improve, because remember, it's your fight. Be prepared to win it.